This is Matt Raymond at the International Food Information Council and Foundation. You ever wonder what makes superfoods super, what exactly they are, and where you can find them? Well, it turns out these foods aren't just popular products that are only found in specialty health food stores. Rather, today we're talking about the unsung superfood heroes, or better yet, the functional foods, which offer a variety of health benefits, uh, which have been supported by scientific research and evidence. Joining me today to discuss this topic is Dr. Jeffrey Blumberg. He is a professor at the Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy and a senior scientist at USDA's Human Nutrition Research Center on Aging at Tufts University. Thank you very much for joining me today, Dr. Blumberg. I'm glad to be with you. The um, term superfoods, which we've heard a lot of, seen a lot on social media and the Internet, has really taken off lately. What does this term even mean, or is it even um, a scientifically accurate term? Well, there is no scientific definition for a superfood. There's not even a regulatory definition for a superfood. It's really just a marketing term, and it's a term I don't actually happen to like. I think it's very misleading. Um, it may lead consumers to think that if I eat one superfood, I don't have to eat very healthfully um, otherwise. If I eat a superfood, let's say a super fruit or a super vegetable, then I don't have to eat as many other fruits and vegetables in my diet. And it detracts from one of the central tenets of healthful nutrition, and that's to choose a diversity of foods. We really want people to choose a whole variety of healthful foods. And is it really appropriate to label a whole group of uh, foods that way? Um, uh, why or why not? Well, again, I think it's absent any kind of uh, scientific definition. But the problem that superfoods, it doesn't really tell me what's so super about it. What's the ingredient? What's the benefit? I prefer the term functional foods. And then when you tell me you have a functional food, I can ask the question, well, what function is it going to benefit? muscle strength, cognitive, co cognitive performance, immune systems, visual acuity, then I know and I can look for the scientific evidence that this particular food or this formulated food with different ingredients actually can have that functional benefit for me. So it's uh, basically what we're talking about is foods that have inherent properties to them that go beyond just the you know, nutritional uh, benefits in, in the food. Right. So a functional food, while we don't actually have a regulatory definition in the United States, um, within scientific circles, we know that a functional food is one whose ingredients, whether they're single ingredients or a mixture of ingredients, actually do help to promote a function, and that may be promoting health and wellness or reducing the risk for a chronic disease. So we know what the function is, and we have scientific evidence to demonstrate that there is that benefit. Now, we see a lot of foods and, and um, beverages, uh, actually, that are advertised as superfoods or marketed that way, but they haven't necessarily been proven by science. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I, I think if you're going to label your product superfood, to me, it suggests that you probably don't have the evidence. Otherwise, you would be making statements about the function that your food is really helping. Um, I, again, I think that we know um, through research how to test and validate credible statements about the benefits of individual ingredients or of whole foods. Again, functional foods could be a whole food or it could be a formulated manufactured food with the right ingredients in the right proportions that will benefit a particular function. One of the things that I think is important in understanding functional foods, by this we mean foods where the ingredients go beyond meeting basic nutritional needs. So if a food just helps me to meet my requirement for a vitamin or a mineral or for a particular fatty acid, that's great. That's basic nutrition. But a functional food has to go beyond meeting basic nutritional needs to really supporting some physiologic function or reducing the risk for some known disease. A couple of buzzwords that we hear a lot um, are prebiotics and probiotics. What, what are they and what's the difference between them? Well, one might consider um, both prebiotics and probiotics to be functional ingredients in whole foods. Um, a probiotic 
is a live bacteria that's good for us. So we know, for example, um, that our guts contain lots of important bacteria. They're important for promoting digestion and lots of other functional benefits of the gastrointestinal system and indeed our whole body. Prebiotics generally refer to dietary fibers that those bacteria like to eat and thrive on. So you can have the food for the good gut bacteria, that is prebiotics. You can have the good bacteria, that's the probiotics. Or you can create foods that we call synbiotics, S-Y-N biotics, which is a combination of both pre and probiotics together. How about soy? That's uh, been very popular as a health food for quite a while. Um, I, I've heard that there are benefits uh, beyond, say, the protein and, and the fiber in the soy. Absolutely. What we know is that all plant foods, including soy, contain a number of phytochemicals. That is, compounds that are not essential nutrients, like vitamins and minerals, but in fact are bioactive components of our diet. So soy, for example, is particularly rich in compounds we call flavonoids. These are a kind of larger category we call polyphenols. And we find polyphenols in soy, we find it in fruits and vegetables, we find polyphenols in whole grains. But each of these different kinds of fruits and vegetables, um, including legumes like soy, have different phytochemicals um, the flavonoids that soy contains are different than the flavonoids you're going to find in an orange or orange juice, for example. Again, this is one of the reasons we like to talk about diversity of foods so that we can take advantage of the benefits from all of these different phytochemical compounds. You mentioned flavonoids, and I probably, like a lot of other people, was very excited to hear that even dark chocolate contains some amounts of flavonoids. Is that correct? And, and is it a, a significant amount? What benefits could be had there? Well, um, it came as a surprise and a, a pleasure to a lot of people to understand that dark chocolate, and in particular, the cocoa powder from which dark chocolate is made, is rich in flavonoids. Green tea is rich in flavonoids, red wine is rich in flavonoids too. Any product that comes from plant foods that are high in these flavonoids are going to be high in whatever the final product is. Um, for example, grapes are high in flavonoids, so we find them high in red wine. Um, cocoa beans are high in flavonoids, so we find them to be high in dark chocolate. We do know from randomized control studies as well as from big observational studies, that a reasonable amount of dark chocolate can in fact provide a functional benefit in terms of improving vascular health. So we know that the flavonoids in dark chocolate, just like the flavonoids in green tea, um, which are similar to one another, can have actual functional benefits. And importantly, these flavonoids are not essential nutrients. Um, there is no deficiency syndrome for flavonoids, and yet we find that they have functional benefits. And that's why we talk about foods that naturally contain flavonoids could be functional foods or new foods that we formulate with flavonoids um, can be functional foods. And in fact, we increasingly find um, ingredients like extracts from green tea being added to different foods to promote their functionality. What kinds of strategies can consumers use to incorporate, really to identify and incorporate these kinds of foods into their diet? It's really a challenge because um, the labeling that we currently use does not identify particular bioactive ingredients. You can look for whether they're sources. So in fact, is the product mixture, the beverage or the bar that you're going to buy does it have blueberries in it? Does it have cranberries in it? That would suggest that it has some of those bioactives. But the labels really aren't allowed to tell us that they have flavonoids or proanthocyanidins or carotenoids in them. So then it becomes incumbent upon the consumer to educate themselves a little bit. So if you're a consumer really looking to promote eye health, 
perhaps reduce your risk for age-related macular degeneration, a really common form of blindness in the elderly, then you need to know that lutein and zeaxanthin, which are carotenoids, are very powerful in having this functional benefit, but you're not gonna find foods labeled with lutein and zeaxanthin. You can find them in things like um, egg yolks, you can find them in spinach, or you can find them in foods that have been formulated with added lutein and zeaxanthin. And I think one question that I've heard a lot is uh, whether there's any synergy if you have a number of these different uh, functional components in a food. How do they how do they work together? Can they build on one another? Sure. I think that in Mother Nature, we know from research that's been done, um, we find synergy between different parts of the food. So, for example, um, almonds are very rich in vitamin E in the nut meat. But the skin surrounding the almond um, is very rich in flavonoids. And we know that flavonoids can synergize with the antioxidant actions of vitamin E. So that's an example of mother nature providing synergy between ingredients in that one whole food. On the other hand, what we have learned from research and nutrition is that we can create functional synergies by mixing together ingredients um, in a particular formulated food. So in a food bar or in a uh, breakfast cereal or in any kind of mixed product. What would you tell someone who is looking to amp up the level of these functional foods and components in, in their own diet? Is it a, a matter of educating themselves? Eat more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains um, would be terrific. I mean, you, you're gonna get a lot of these functional ingredients if you have a healthful diet that's diverse in the choices that you make. Um, but if you find products that are labeled as superfoods or that promote a functional benefit, then you're gonna have to look a little deeper in reading the label, in talking to a healthcare professional, or in searching the web to educate yourself about are these the right ingredients for that function and are the doses inside that product sufficient to achieve that function. Uh, one last question for you. What do you think the future of functional foods looks like? Oh, I think the future of functional foods is very bright. The more we learn about nutrition science, the more we learn about how the components in our diets and in our dietary patterns promote health, promote physiologic function, reduce our risk for common chronic diseases, we're going to see more and more functional foods being formulated more dietary guidelines based on the functionality of foods. As we know now that nutrition and genetics intersect, we're gonna see um, people being given advice to eat according to their genes, to feed their genes in just the right way. And I think it's probably not too long before we find 3D printers in the kitchen that is gonna formulate the perfect food for you. All right. Well, Dr. Jeffrey Blumberg, thank you so much for your time. Very enlightening, certainly, and uh, we appreciate it.